You've come from Iraq originally. Yes. Why did you end up in Syria? How did you end up in Syria? Because the situation back home was really bad. A lot of bombing, a lot of uh, uh, terrifying, and my daughter, the oldest one, she couldn't take it, and uh, uh, me as well. I mean, I'll have to let my family be safe and decided to go to Syria. You had your two daughters and you took your mother? Yes, you well. and all the, yeah, she's, she's 82 years. I mean, um, she was really frightening. She couldn't sleep, even the oldest daughter. She couldn't sleep all night. She keep around the house and thinking, you know, oh, I don't know any minute uh, she's gonna dead or, you know, it's really terrified. When you say, Ban, you didn't choose uh, Great Britain, England to come. Um, are you saying that you, you would have gone anywhere really to be safe? It wasn't about coming here? Well, it's just as long as we're going to be safe and uh, we're going to have a good life. I mean, like uh, the other human being. Sure. And Julie, life. this is where you come in. Explain to people what your job is, what you're entrusted to doing and what sort of responsibility and obligation uh, that Britain, the United Kingdom, is under to accept people like BAM? Yeah, sure. So I'm the National Resettlement Manager for Refugee Action. So I'm responsible for the resettlement programmes across the UK. And there's a number of different resettlement programmes. There's the Gateway Resettlement Programme, and that's what BAM came through on. So the UK government has pledged to resettle 750 refugees a year. But then you get here and there is reality. Action. How have you been received? Do people welcome you? Do oh you yes, there's a refugee safe? action uh, team. Mm. They've been waiting for uh, each family. They welcome us and took us to the house, which is we stayed for uh, you know f for one year, and then the next day they came in um, and took us to the post office to have some photos and for applying for the. Uh, immigration and all sorts so of things. So what is your situation now? Do you have a home to live in? Uh, you have a home, an apartment, a house? No, no, you... no, here? Yes. Uh, a home, yeah, with, yes. the, with the two level, uh, 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 three bedrooms and a living room and dining room, everything. Now, Julie, this is, Bannon, this is no disrespect to you and, I, and we're so pleased for you and your, your children that you're safe, but this is where some people do have a problem, Julie. Yes. So they say, OK, BAN doesn't come from here. There are people here who have paid in the national insurance yeah. who don't have homes, who are finding it hard to find school yeah. places. You know, we're struggling. The NHS yeah. is groaning under the amount of people yeah. trying to use it. What do you say to those people? You know, it's not that we can support one or the other. We have to support local people here that haven't got, who are homeless and in difficulty. But at the same time, we live in a global world. You know, we are part of this world. We can't pick and choose the bits that, that we want. We, we are one of the richest. Well, we can't. Um, we can do we do we say we trade we we only do that bit we'll only go on holiday you can but, pick and choose but you mightn't be able to sleep at night but morally right we yeah. are one of the richest countries in the world we have a moral obligation mm -hmm. to do this <laughs>